Kenzie's Corner with Jim Kenzie. Some people call them left-lean bandits. Some people call them members of the Anti-Destination League. But I call them jerks. Yes, that was Jim Kenzie in 1989. And surprise, surprise, he's still here. In fact, we're all still here. In part because of maybe good genes, lots of luck, and of course you, our viewers, many of whom were not even born back then. Well, of course, Jim Kenzie has ruled the soapbox since then, but always at the end of the show. Well, recently, Jim came to me and said, Brad, I got a big story, a Canadian story that's going to change the automotive industry in a big way, and it should be the lead story, which is what they call it in this business. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is Jim Kenzie minus his soapbox. Every week, we bring you stories about cars and the people that drive them. Well, today we're at the McMaster Automotive Resource Center in Hamilton, Ontario, with the story about three technical boffins from Waterloo, Ontario, who engineer those cars, specifically make them run cleaner. Now, you're going to ask yourself, how can even Kenzie make a story about exhaust emission controls entertaining? Well, trust me, this is a fantastic story, so don't touch that dial. So a catalytic converter in a car is uh, designed to clean all the pollution that's generated by an internal combustion engine. And the beautiful thing about a catalytic converter is that it works based on chemistry. But that chemistry doesn't activate until it achieves operating temperature. And operating temperature can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, depending on um, how much heat is being generated by the engine. And until the time it reaches operating temperature, that window is referred to as cold start emissions. And research around the world has suggested that up to 80% of all the pollution generated by vehicles today are directly attributed to cold start emissions. Now these aren't the first people to realize that heating the catalytic converter is a good idea. They were clever enough to use induction technology to make it work economically. Our technology, uh, in fact, works on the inside of the catalytic converter directly within the, uh, the ceramic itself. And we electrically heat that ceramic with induction technology. So it's a very efficient energy transfer and uh, happens very, very quickly. So one of the things that's really unique about the approach that we take in terms of applying this induction technology to the catalytic converter is we tie it directly into the vehicle's computer, so the ECU. So the vehicle's computer now controls this induction circuit. It can turn the circuit on and off throughout the drive cycle. The vehicle can now do a much better job, or the catalytic converter can do a much better job in terms of cleaning the air. So it's a very intelligent, uh, very efficient system that all vehicles can benefit from, regardless of their size. And uh, we're now at the point where it's ready for commercialization. Okay, so Jim, what you have in your hand there is a standard piece of ceramic that's inside of a catalytic converter. So what we do is we take that standard piece of ceramic, we then modify the existing ceramic by inserting steel rods into the ceramic. You can nice see them that. there. They then react with the induction coil. So this is basically copper that's wrapping around the standard ceramic that's been augmented with the steel rods. This gets connected to an induction circuit and there you have it. That's the basic technology. Simple applied science. You know they say that timing is everything. Well the timing for this technology really hits the sweet spot because emission standards are going to get much tougher over the next 10 years particularly for those large pickup trucks that we seem to love so much. In fact, between 2016 and 2025, so for the next decade, emission standards in North America alone are being uh, reduced by 40%. Uh, so between 2016 and 2025, fuel economy needs to be uh, improved, so reduced consumption and emissions need to be reduced as well. So that's really the opportunity that we're focused on, on um, achieving in dealing with some of the most educated or scientists in this field, you know, they've had that aha moment where it's like, why didn't we think of that? It's, uh, it's in effect building a better mousetrap. It really is simple in terms of how we've um, applied the technology, but it's that um, simplicity that makes it an elegant solution. And uh, we're really looking forward to the road ahead. Well, that was an exhausting day, but you know, this has the potential to be a really big deal. The next step for the lads, they take the technology to the tier one suppliers, the people that make the exhaust systems for the car manufacturers. And they're in the process of testing it with them right now. My sole remaining question is, where do I get some shares? Anyway, 
back to our regularly scheduled programming featuring guess who? Well, that concludes another episode of the Jim Kenzie Show, I mean Motoring TV. But in all seriousness, we're going to keep an eye on this catalytic converter story. I mean, we think it's so cool that Canadians are at the forefront of this automotive technology, and we wish them luck.